Right. Shotgun? Check. Smoke grenades? Check. Rabid My Little Pony repellent? Double check. It's the five games for Doomsday Expeditions. So, this is a series of interviews that I'm going to do with people who've been nominated for the Spiel des Jahres. Some will come out before the awards, and one at least, but maybe more, will come out after the awards. Usually, I get the opportunity to go to the ceremony, drink in the atmosphere, and find out what's sort of going on. But unfortunately, due to this shitty virus, we're not going to be able to do that this year. So I'm going to try and collect as many of the nominees as I can. For sure, some people will be left out, but fingers crossed it'll be as comprehensive as it can. Sit back, enjoy, and hopefully next year we'll be able to do the thing live. So I'm here... Well, I'm not. I'm in a separate place. They're in a separate place. But speaking to the people from Horrible Guild, and this is Yalmar Hack and Lorenzo Silva, and they are the designers of The King's Dilemma. So firstly, congratulations on the nomination. And w- firstly, were you surprised on, on the day that they were announced that King's Dilemma was one of the games nominated for the Kennerspiel? We surely were surprised and very happy. And you can see it, actually, uh, in a video that Lorenzo did where where he reacts. I mean, he, he did a video while he was reacting to the news and he's, like, screaming uh, like a crazy guy. So I I think that, uh, yes, we were surprised. and <laughs> Yeah, it was a huge emotion and... It was incredible, incredible, and 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 also when it happened in in Italy, the lockdown was um, was was ending, almost ending, and uh, after after the nomination, uh, me and Yalmar came to my house, and it was the first person that I saw after the the long lockdown, and we. And we celebrated the the nomination together, and it was great. Yes, it it was the best way to start uh, seeing people again. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and so horrible has been around now for you know almost a decade, and you, you've released a lot of games that I would say fall in the in the sort of weight of the Spiel des Jahres. And I I must confess, and this is nothing against the game The King's Dilemma, because I think The King's Dilemma is absolutely fantastic, but I was surprised that it was nominated for a Kenner Spiel. Was was the fact that this game was nominated surprising to you above something like Dragon's Castle, for instance? Um, Yes. In in, in some way, I I understand why you... um, what you say, and... And, and I, I agree that it's it's it could be a strange game for for the Kenner spiel, but at the same time, in in the past there was games like um, Pandemic, if I'm not Pandemic Legacy, if I'm not wrong. So um, seems that there is some tradition in nominating uh, games that have very peculiar and original. Uh, new direction to the to the game design i think that this is why the jury decided to nominate the king's dilemma because it's something really new probably yes, i th- i think they 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 really showed us that the uh i mean the nominations is is are a place where they they showcase things they like about the gaming work, world uh, it's it's maybe you're not going to win, but they I think they uh, left that spot for for like um, how do you say um, uh, to give a prize to 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 showcase uh, something original peculiar that happened in the gaming world. I think that was what happened. So let's let's go back and talk about the king's dilemma then, because when I played it. What really struck me is, I I think, what is great 
what great theme in a game is is when you feel like you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And the thing that really struck me about King's Dilemma when I played it is it felt like that you were a council in a medieval land sitting around the table discussing the issues, trying to work out not only what is best for you, but what is best for the country and when self-interest should be a factor and when you should subsume that self-interest to the to the betterment of the country. What was what was the origin of the game? What gave you the idea to to come up with this particular game? Yeah, so uh, uh, me and Lorenzo normally uh, start from from a very early concept and work together. Uh, so I think what so I think what you are saying is is very like interesting because we all we tried to strike this balance between uh, story and and like the story that you tell as a player and the story that the game tells. Uh, so if you think about it, uh, this is a game that has some text inside. Right, and uh, so in in games when when there is text, normally you just get the story from the game. You are not like creating your own, and so we left the space for people discussing on the on on top of the table uh, to create also their story uh, and mix it together with what the world was telling them, what 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 was happening. So, and about the start of the idea, maybe Lorenzo, you want to add something? Uh, yeah, but it's it's quite it's quite intuitive, I think, because the first idea came after playing uh, a very popular um, <laughs> video game called Reigns, um, and I think it's it's an amazing game for cell phones and. Playing that, we started to um, to have this idea to to find a way to uh, bring that kind of experience on the table. That that kind of very simple choices between uh, yes or no. It's it's a very uh, basic concept. And when we started to work on on the board game, in the end, it came to be very different from from. The, the video game it um, and it, it gave us the the um, the chance to to create a whole world and a lot of stories and so it, it started from something very simple and like choose between yes or no and in the end it came out to be a super complex world and two thousand years of history and and in the end it's king's dilemma and so what what really surprises me is because often I don't like text in games. I don't think it contributes. I, I think I think the story that is told by the game often isn't helped by text. Whereas in King's Dilemma, what really surprised me is how good the writing is. Usually writing in games is awful. I mean, how long did the process take to write the stories and how important was it to you that the writing was of a decent quality? Um, it took something like three years and a half, probably, three years and something. And it was super complex because uh, the story was uh, the most important thing in, in King's Dilemma and also the balance between um the story and the gameplay because we wanted uh this conflict between um between the decision that the player have to take uh was uh for the story or to win the game and this this is always almost always in conflict and to and to reach this was um have been super hard because uh, was also super hard to test the game because uh, we had to create uh, the story. The, the concept of the story was created together with uh, Carlo Burelli, that is the, the, the main writer. Uh, then he had to write the text, but every card had, had to be checked like 30 times because... Um, Every small details was really important because sometimes we had to su suggest on the front that 
something could happen on the back if you take some decision. So we had to write, uh, read, correct, and start it again and again and again, something like 20 times. I, I don't know. Yeah, how so, <laughs> yeah, so one, one thing is, is obviously the story and uh, the gameplay are very uh, tight together, right? So uh, when we were working on the game, we needed the text to kind of understand where the game were, was going. And when we saw that the game wasn't working as we wanted it to, we had to change the core mechanics and, and also like the structure of how the, 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 the events interconnect. And, and this meant we had to go back and rewrite the whole stories and, and change the details in the cards. And we did this again and again. Uh, like Lorenzo said. And uh, yeah, like he said, we started, um, we designed the stories together with Carlo Burelli and we made a, a very uh, um, detailed world building effort with uh, Giuseppe Lapadula, which is um, a friend of Lorenzo. And we uh, created almost 3,000 years of story of the world to, uh, to make it so that the world wasn't so fictional, didn't feel so fictional, that it had a foundation, right? Yeah. Uh, and so we, we really started like with, re with religion, with how the world was born, with, with how the people migrated, with the climatic changes that happened in the very early uh, years of the world. And to, to like we considered climate, like people are fishing in some places because um, the winds uh, that come from the mountains do not permit to uh, grow the wheat on, on, on their backs. So they have to go in the sea. And, and so they are fishers, you know, and this we did this with the whole world. And, and so there has been a debate and I think the debate is is being one sort of on the side that I come down on. And it, it, the question is, you know, are board games art? And I have this definition of art in which I, I think that art should reflect life. It should talk about who we are as humans. And The King's Dilemma, what really struck me is that it doesn't shy away from very adult themes, very traumatic themes from very serious themes as well as frivolous things like weddings you know was there ever any point where you thought maybe we're going too far for the gaming world which can be quite conservative we did not uh we 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 left always a choice and this is the key so talking about some uh, let's say heavy arguments uh heavy uh, subjects Uh, can be uh, not the right choice <laughs> when you are doing a game for, for the public, right? But if you leave a choice, it's people who choose which way to go, what they want and, and what they want for their game, for their world, for their fictional world, and what they want to talk about um, on or how they want to resolve it. So actually freedom is maybe the the most important world word in this in this situation so you are free to manage those uh, mm, subjects uh, how you please yeah and we also um, we have been probably at one point we were a little bit concerned and worried that maybe that maybe some of the theme of the game were a little bit too much or some of the choices uh, could upset some of the players and we we did we did a, a very big research and we asked for supervision of um, many people um to to, to check if uh, uh, the the theme that we were uh, talking about were expressed in the right way and in a way that uh, was not offensive for anybody that yeah yeah obviously we had that concern and so you know what it, it, it 
On the box, it says, you know, the dilemma card system. And what this implies is that this is a system that can exist independently of the king's dilemma. Are there any other, are there plans to have more games with this system in it? It's, uh, it's something that we want to develop. Um, we, for sure, we will continue the King's Dilemma line. Uh, we are starting to work on something new, but uh, it's very early and it will take uh, a couple of years at least. And the Dilemma card system, we think that it's really good for um, for a storytelling um like we did in King's Dilemma, but we would like to change the the mechanic a little bit and we would like to um, experiment a little bit more with more mechanic uh, like war game or more strategic um, gameplay with the next King's Dilemma. But it, this is... It's just ideas for the moment. Yes, so uh, it it leaves a lot of space, a lot of possibilities, and uh, I think we we went very experimental in this in this chapter, let's say. Uh, but it it's it's because we had no choice. I mean, there was nothing like this before, and so we had to to be experimental to to uh, try out uh, these new ways of of making story, uh, story and narrative interact with gameplay but we are uh, gaining experience and so uh, probably we will do uh, even better choices i hope in the in the next uh, experiments <laughs> so and and so so talking about the spiel des Jahres then what would a win mean to a studio like horrible guild it would mean to probably change the destiny of the studio and change our life in some ways, it's uh, it's the most important uh, award in the game in the board game industry. So um, Horrible Guild is growing since years, but probably uh, already the nomination. It's already a big boost uh, in visibility and credibility and uh, w- winning the award w- would mean everything it's it's one of the goal it's one of the main goal for uh, every company probably and every game designer that makes uh, that makes uh, games so it would be the most important thing that would happen in in the years Yes, and and I think with this credibility, it's it's like they they tell you the market, the, the people that they tell you, uh, yes, you're doing it right. Do it even bigger, you know. It's it's uh, like letting you go and doing this uh, in in an even even bold, boldier way. How do you say it? Bolder way. Hopefully, you'll be nominated in the future for various Builders Yaris Awards, but you, you, I mean, this is the first time for Horrible and it might be the the only time for a while. How sad are you that you're not going to be able to go to Berlin and go to the ceremony, that the year you get nominated is the year that the the pandemic makes us all stay where we are? Yeah, I think we are really sad because we 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 like to, to, to <laughs> I mean, to... To go and, and have some nice time with, with uh, to enjoy the, the the ceremony and and this year we cannot so and maybe we 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 will have to like be on a screen and talk from from home where the kids can come in and scream and or the connection could go crazy and and like get, let us stutter in in the middle of the ceremony so uh, I think. Uh, it's quite a thing that we cannot go. I think we we yeah we are uh, sad about it, right, Lorenzo? Yes, yeah, super sad. And but to be honest, I really hope that the jury will 
invite all the all the nominee and the winner of this year maybe next year because i think it's a great chance to to meet the jury meet press people and and have some interaction it, it's a very important moment and uh, for us we, we will just stay home and it's okay for this year because 2020 is a crazy year but next year i hope will be better brilliant well i wish both of you and i wish the company as a whole I'm, i've always been a a great fan of Horrible Guild. Uh, I wish you best of luck for the award ceremony and uh, fingers crossed for you on uh, on Monday. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Thank you very much. You can support the show by going to patreon.com forward slash 5G for D.